This will be the final uh, episode of our series, Our Place in the Universe, and we will consider our entire universe. A lot of what we know about deep space objects comes from instruments like the Hubble Space Telescope. Way back in 1995, scientists did a risky thing. They pointed the Hubble Space Telescope to a region of empty space. They didn't know what they would see, if anything. But the result was so spectacular that they repeated this observation again in 2003. And here we see the patch of sky where they oriented the Hubble. This tiny little square here where there weren't very many stars. They purposely chose a, a region of the sky that appeared to be empty. They took 800 images with a total exposure time of over 11 days. It required 400 orbits of the Hubble telescope. And this is what they saw. In that tiny little region of empty space, they found 10,000 galaxies. 10,000 galaxies. This image is called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field Image. Now, if you think about that, if in this little square, this little bit of the night sky, there are 10,000 galaxies in that region, well, it stands to reason over here, there are 10,000 galaxies. In this little patch here, 10,000 galaxies. And when you do the math, the number of little squares that would fit across the entire sky, you reach a conclusion that the universe is host to hundreds of billions of galaxies. Now in this picture, we've got lots of galaxies, but they're not all at the same distance with respect to us. The smallest red galaxies are the farthest galaxies, and they are seen as they were 13 billion years ago, only 800 million years after the Big Bang. So these tiny little red splotches here are the most distant galaxies in this image. They are 13 billion light years away, which means we're seeing them as they were 13 billion years ago. So they were very young galaxies, only 800 million years old after the Big Bang. By contrast, some of these brighter, well-defined galaxies are much closer. And they are uh, seen as they were maybe a billion or so years ago. So they're a billion light years away, so we're seeing them as they were a billion years ago. So they would be, in a sense, mature galaxies. They are 13 billion years old, basically, and we're seeing them in their mature state. Whereas these very distant galaxies, we're seeing them as they were when they were very young galaxies. You'll notice in this image, these little pointy things here, these are actually stars in our Milky Way galaxy, but there's only four of them here. So they really did find a patch of dark sky. All of the rest of the splotches and smudges are galaxies, each with perhaps a hundred billion stars. Here's another image uh, created with the Hubble and some other instruments. Again, a small patch of empty space is actually filled with thousands of galaxies. Now, let's consider this image again, and let's now sort these galaxies based on how far away they are from us. So again, the real bright ones are the closer galaxies, and the tiny little dim red dots are the really far away galaxies. And then others are have an in-between distance. And when you arrange galaxies like that, you can create a structure like this. At the top, we have the nearby galaxies. Middle, we have galaxies farther away. And at the bottom, we have galaxies really far away. And you'll notice they, they have different structures. The galaxies at the top, the close by ones, they appear to have well-organized structures. Some of them are spiral galaxies and they have the spiral arms and they are large and they appear like our own galaxy or the Andromeda galaxy. The ones really far away have a very different structure. They're small sort of globular cluster type galaxies, small galaxies like the Magellanic Clouds. 
And the idea is, is that remember, we're seeing these galaxies as they were 11.9, 12.4, 12.6, 13 billion years ago. So these are pictures of galaxies when they were really young. The ones up here, the nearby ones, we're seeing them as they are matured galaxies. So these galaxies have had a long time to mature. We're seeing the light from a mature galaxy. And here we're seeing the light from infant galaxies. And in the middle, something in the middle. And we do seem to get sort of simple, small structure here, more complex galactic structures here, and then more mature, large, complex galaxies here. So we're kind of seeing the evolution, the development of galaxies over 13 billion years time. They start out as these smaller kind of clusters of stars that may have merged over time to form more larger galaxies. And in time, they are larger and larger and they get more uh, structure to them. Recently, Hubble has detected a galaxy that is 13.3 billion light years away. So we're seeing it as it was just 500 million years after the Big Bang. So this is an infant galaxy. It's one of the most distant objects ever detected. So it is a sobering fact when we consider a diagram like this. Our Milky Way would be one of these dots. This then is a map of our region of the universe. Each dot would be an entire galaxy. Now there is some structure to this. There are clumps of galaxies. So it's not that galaxies are evenly distributed throughout space. They're not. There's a clumpiness to that. And scientists are, are you know, figuring out why that is. And there are some good ideas. But the point is there are just so many galaxies in just this region of our universe. Again, the estimates are hundreds of billions of galaxies in our universe. To get a sense of that scale, uh, we'll use this analogy. Consider this cube here. Let's imagine this whole cube represents our entire universe. Each of the little spots would be one galaxy, and a bunch of spots would be a cluster of galaxies. But now let's make the analogy that the cube is also the size of a classroom and the little spots are dust particles. So in the size of a classroom, galaxies would be the size of little dust particles. A classroom can be the environment for a lot of dust particles, just as our entire universe is the home to hundreds of billions of galaxies. Now humans often ponder as they gaze upon the night sky, what does it all mean? Well, science raises the challenging possibility that we live in a universe that made us, but was not made for us. In this view, there is no meaning that is built into the universe. We must construct our own significance. And we'll quote Carl Sagan in this regard, we make our world significant by the courage of our questions and the depth of our answers. And here is a question on the minds of many these days. Is there anybody out there? Should we find other intelligent beings in the universe, it will be a profound reminder of this awesome fact that we all of us in this universe are a way for the cosmos to know itself. <laughs>